I have a personal obsession with becoming the best you can possibly be. And chances are, if you're watching this, you love self-growth. You love the satisfaction of feeling like every year you're getting better. And every year you're evolving and improving and reaching towards your potential. Well, in this video, I thought I would share some of the key research I've seen from the de facto number one researcher in the world on what it takes to become the best in your chosen field. Now, everything we talk about here on Modern Health Monk is about reaching your full potential in life in every part of your life that matters. Now, today I wanna to share one of the ways you can attain mastery in the financial part of your life. I diversify my money between savings and investments for financial security down the line. And as someone who has always had a hard time with money, the stock market really scared me and it made me nervous about what stocks to pick. But you don't have to pick stocks or be an expert to start investing. If you're looking for an easy, accessible way to start putting your money to work, Wealthfront is a great option, even if you have little to no investment knowledge at all. Now let's take a look at the product demo that Wealthfront put together so I can show you all of what their clients are experiencing. They build and automate your portfolio, so you don't have to worry about researching stocks or making manual trades. All you have to do is answer a few questions to determine your risk score, and from there, Wealthfront will take care of the rest. They build you a personalized portfolio designed to maximize your returns while managing your risk. It'll just take you a few minutes and $500 to set up an account. But to help you get started, Wealthfront has a very special offer for my viewers. If you sign up through the link in my bio, the first $5,000 you put in your account will be managed for free. So how do you sign up? Just go to the link on the screen there, wealthfront.com forward slash monk. There's also a link in the description below for easy access. And thanks to Wealthfront for sponsoring today's video. Now check out these direct quotes from Kay Anders Ericsson, who is the de facto number one researcher on what it takes to become an expert in your field. I thought this was incredibly interesting. He said that in chess, the single most important predictor of a chess player's ability is the time spent reflecting on the wrong moves they made and adjusting. It generally takes around 10 years of this kind of practice. Now what about sports? This is about quarterbacks and football. The best quarterbacks spend the most time reviewing the tapes of their performance, not the most time playing the game. Now, what about people like authors and poets and intellectual craft? They have generally been writing for greater than 10 years before their best work. And it's the same for a scientist's most important publication. For composers, it's usually even over 20 years on average. And now going back to athletes, the difference between amateurs and the best in the world is that amateur runners are more likely to zone out on their runs while the pros are tracking their breathing, their pacing, Etc. Now, what I love the most about Kay Anders Ericsson's research is that he was emphatic. It's not just about putting in 10,000 hours. It's about 10,000 deliberate hours where you are painstakingly tracking your progress and what you have to work on. Now, let's talk about the four practical ways you can then apply this to mastering your chosen craft. The first is targeting a specific part of a specific skill, he says. So, for example, rather than just playing tennis and improving your tennis game, you improve your overhand. Now for me, you guys may not know this, but I have a private medical practice in Los Angeles as a Chinese medicine doctor, and I see patients several days a week. Now for me to become the best in the world at my craft, we need to zoom in from just medicine to a specific piece of medicine. Is it diagnosis? Is it effective treatment? Is it dosaging of the herbs I use? So I focused on medicine, Chinese medicine, diagnosis. So that's the specific part of the greater skill of medicine that I want to work on. The second thing is to emulate a professional. You know, a lot of us feel confused about where to go to work on our life or to become good at what we do. But often modeling is one of the most effective ways to find out how healthy relationships work, how the best people in medicine work, the best surgeons train, how the best tennis players think, how the best chess masters line up their next move. If you can find someone who's doing it at a high level, try to learn how they think, how they train, and how they implement daily rituals. And that is a huge benefit to just trying to figure it out. The third is to get clear feedback on your performance. So if you wanna be the best salesperson in your job, that's kind of easy, right? Because the benchmark is you either made the sale and XYZ number of sales, and it helped the person that actually wanted that, or you didn't. In medicine, the patient either got better 
or they got worse, or they stayed the same. And in tennis, you either were working on that overhand and you hit it over the net, or you hit it, you know, out of the park or into the net. So there needs to be feedback to know your actual skill is getting better. And the last thing Anders Eriksson says is to use proven training techniques. How do the best in that field or that skill, how do they train? You know, maybe it is training your tennis serve. Well, maybe just doing a thousand serves a day is all it takes to be the best to get that skill. But maybe it's not. Maybe there are more nuanced aspects where your tennis coach may say, okay, wait till the highest part of the ball, wait till it's at its highest point and try to hit it with the very top of your racket. That's different from just hitting a thousand balls. Or maybe if you're a backhand, your coach says, hey, you need to change the way you position your feet and then hit the ball and then focus on your follow through. So this very specific, very micro adjusted training and feedback is really, really key to becoming the best at what you do. And one final thing here that I find very helpful is the story of Earl Nightingale, one of my favorite personal development teachers. And he said in one of his audio programs that he told the story of this man that passed these unemployed steelworkers during the Great Depression. And he said that they were all complaining about they couldn't find work, they couldn't support their families, and what were they gonna do? And the guy went home thinking, and he was like, well, what have you guys been doing in your free time? You know, in the decades that you'd been at this job, in your free time, dedicating an hour a day, you literally could have become an open heart surgeon in that free time. And he says, with daily dedication of one hour a day towards your chosen craft, in five years, you'll be the top 1% in the world. So if you think becoming the best sounds like a lot of work, it is, but even dedicating an hour a day towards something you love or that's important to you can help you become one of the best there is, given enough time and enough longevity. That's all I've got for you here today, guys. I want you to comment below. Let me know what is a craft or skill or mindset you're trying to master. For me right now, it's the craft of medicine. And again, thanks to Wealthfront. You guys can check out the special link below if you guys wanna check them out. And otherwise, you guys, after you check out the links below, I have two related videos for you right over here.